These are the five reasons you, yes you specifically, suck at Elden Ring PvP. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, I've got some tips and tricks to help you become a gank-slaying demon in no time. Stick around to the end to get an extra special bonus tip so this doesn't happen mm -hmm. to you. Oh no! Killed by a blue! Ah! The shame! The shame! Reason number one. You simply suck. Just kidding. Kind of. Mm -hmm. You simply lack experience. There's no need to feel any shame when you're starting out and consistently facing defeat in your first 10, 20, even 100 invasions. <coughs> Scary. I know. But don't let that discourage you. In fact, this is a common experience for newcomers and it's an integral part of the learning process. Processing these losses are essential because they are providing valuable insights and opportunities for improvement. You'll learn naturally and grow over time. You may not win the first few encounters, and you definitely won't, but with each defeat, you'll gain new experience and develop new strategies and become a more formidable opponent. Don't give up. Give yourself a good 20 hours to master the basics. Ugh, I know that sounds long, but bear with me. And just remember, even the best of us still lose, and the odds are wholly stacked against the invader, especially with toxic gankers. Which, if you don't know, a ganker is people who are typically overleveled, waiting in a group of three to ambush you and completely destroy you, and then bag you to top it off. Understanding the game mechanics. By repeatedly participating in battles, you gradually become more familiar with Elden Ring's mechanics, including the controls, weapons, armor, skills and ashes, and level terrain. This understanding is crucial for success in player versus player scenarios. As a snag on a rock or a misreading of a reach of a Moonvale's transient moonlight attack might mean certain death. Observing and analyzing opponents. With each loss, you start to pay closer attention to your opponent's movements and tactics. This is where the real learning begins. You'll notice patterns and tendencies, allowing you to anticipate your opponent's moves and adapt your strategy accordingly. Learning which weapons have which skills or how to counter a specific ash in the heat of the moment is the difference between death or winning, then you can bag them. <laughs> I'm kidding, kind of. Improving reaction time. PvP battles often require quick reflexes and split second decision making. The more you practice, the better your reaction time becomes. This improvement can make a significant difference in the outcome of your PvP battles. Building resilience. Enduring losses and setbacks can help you build resilience, not only in the virtual world, but also in real life. Learning to cope with failure and to bounce back with a positive attitude is a valuable skill. Life will certainly shit on you about as much as a Souls game, so buckle up, buttercup, and give them hell. Seek advice and feedback. Don't hesitate to seek advice from more experienced players or consult online forums and guides, just like this video. Learning from others' experience can accelerate your progress and help you identify areas where you can improve. If you make an online friend, see if they'll spar with you and work with them on improving things like parrying, backstabs, and different weapon attacks. Experimenting and adapting. Losing gives you the freedom to experiment with different strategies and play styles. Over time, you can adapt your own unique approach and find the one that suits your strengths and preferences best. You may find that with enough experience that any build slash play style can be mastered and the variety that provides in gameplay is mwah, chef's kiss. Last, and certainly not least, is celebrate the small wins. While the losses may seem overwhelming, celebrate your small victories along the way. Maybe you managed to land a few hits, pull off a clever maneuver, or even secured your first win. These achievements are stepping stones to becoming a better player. Most importantly, have fun. If you find yourself enraged and irritated, you're going to play worse than ever. Take time away from the game and decompress. It's often in our moments of not playing that our brains work out subtle things that we can do to improve, without you even knowing it. The power of the human brain, my souls bros. Reason number two, your rolls suck, AKA panic rolling. Yeah. By definition, panic rolling is simply mashing the roll button without thought or plan of action afterward. In PVP, you will get hit close to death in most of your encounters. So learning to keep cool in situations where you might begin to panic can be a major decision that makes or breaks your battles. Remember to breathe and focus on your opponent's moves so that you can react to what's coming next and not just react to what's happening in the moment. 
I'm not saying never roll. Just be mindful of which direction you roll in and ultimately when you hit the button to ensure you aren't getting roll caught, which is a personal favorite tactic I use against my foes because panic rolling is oftentimes super predictable. Most of the time, it benefits you to roll inward toward your opponent so that you can turn this defensive maneuver into an opportunity to gain advantage. If rolling toward them isn't working, try rolling to the left or to the right side of your opponent, doing your best to avoid getting backhanded by an R1 spam. Sometimes, having low health can be an advantage, as the host will most likely charge forward, giving you the opportunity to slice right through the host's paper-thin skin and secure the victory. Yeah! Reason number three, your build sucks. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of builds, you should subscribe to this channel for fun and exciting builds. Now this one I'm a little hesitant on, because a great player can make almost anything work for them. Just look at Chase the Bro, dude could wreck you with salad fingers. But for most newbies, your suboptimal build could be the reason why you're rage quitting and never returning to Elden Ring PvP. No matter your level, there are tons of PvP build videos on YouTube, and tons of channels, like ours, that can give you inspiration to make your own. Without knowing what playstyle suits you in particular, there are a few best practices to follow when creating your own build. First off, level your fucking vigor. Jesus. I know, I know, but trust me on this one, and aim for a high level vigor as you can, with soft caps at 40, 60, and a hard cap at 80. In low levels, give yourself enough stats to wield your build armaments, and pump the rest into vigor, my dudes. Oh my god! Learn and understand invasion levels. Your level 700 character with plus 25 weapons are only going to give you one type of experience, so play around with a new character or multiple characters, paying close attention to rune levels and weapon levels. Yes, your plus 25 weapon will get you zero invasions mid to low levels. Try finding specific build videos with the level you are trying to invade in and see what their weapons are scaled to. I know it's overwhelming at first, but I promise once you get it, it's easy. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. Don't follow all the stupid Bullshit meta builds with Moon Veil, Blasphemous Blade, Rivers of Blood, Sacred Relic Sword, you know where I'm going with this. These components of builds are powerful, yes, but they can also be used as an L2 crutch in place of actually learning great PvP skills. Go back to these weapons when you're skilled enough not to use them as crutches. You'll thank me later. My best advice in tailoring your build is choose one that feels fun and natural to you. You can always try new weapons, spells, armors, stat splits, what have you, later. For me, faith-based characters are my least favorite, but Eric loves them, and he and I both love pure strength builds. So again, pick one that feels natural to your existing playstyle and run with it. Reason number four, your loadout sucks. Mm -hmm. AKA, you aren't using all the colors in the crayon box. You've taken some L's, you've learned to roll without panic, and you your build is optimized, at least enough to take and deliver some damage. Then why do you continue to suck at PvP? Let me rattle off some crayons that you might not be using, but you totally should. Ashes of War. Preferably with infusions that complement your build. Blood infusions proc bleed buildup, which result in your opponent popping like a balloon and losing a ton of health. Ever heard people say bleed is OP? OP means overpowered for you titty sucking simps. Well, it's true to some extent. Frost is also super viable, which works similar to bleed, but leaves a status effect that weakens them to physical attacks for a specific amount of time. Truly OP indeed. So many amazing ashes to play with, so don't neglect them. I try to switch up my ashes and skills along with my weapons and armor quite often, and I have an absolute blast. 
get into consumables, bro. Not including HP and FP regen flasks. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about greases, which only work on standard quality, keen or heavy affinity weapons. And then you can use all these wonderful greases in the game to coat your armament in blood, rot, frost, poison, fire, magic, etc. Some spells even work like greases to coat weapon buffs, such as blood flame, electricity, and holy damage buffs. Oh my, pots, both ritual and crack pots. Pots aren't the easiest things to land in PVP, and an experienced foe will almost always dodge and punish such attempts. But that shouldn't deter you from chucking a lightning, fire, rot, or poison pot at the right opportune moment. While some may view pots as an affront to the Elden Ring PVP gaming etiquette, they are, nonetheless, a feature of the game and should be used in your tool belt if you are serious about making waves in PvP. Wondrous Physic. You are allowed to add two tiers into your Physic, so choosing the best one is really about your playstyle. I prefer the 3 minute second chance and light roll, the Crimson Bubble tier and Winged Crystal tier respectively, but there are other great options depending on your playstyle such as health regen over time, increased stats for a short period of time, and even two tiers that make you go mega boom, which is fun and hilarious. Throwing items, fan daggers, kukri, gravity stone fans. Throwing items can strip your foe of the last sliver of health and or stun lock them for your follow-up finisher. Either way, these items are the cherry on top of any build. Reason number five, your internet sucks or you have McDonald's Wi-Fi. Shout out to Drunk Souls. Hey girl, hi. Latency in Elden Ring PvP is something of a shifty little devil and can change depending on your internet connection and rather unfairly, your opponent's connection, uh -huh. especially when the host and their cooperator have butthole internet. But let's not despair. If you can get a sense of the latency, you can use it to your advantage or at least make sure you don't get bagged by a moon veil wielding noob. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, with really bad latency and lag, there's really nothing you can do. So if you're sure the issue is in your connection, feel free to sever and look for better quality invasions. There are plenty to be had, especially with the DLC on the horizon. <gasps> and your bonus reason, your spacing sucks. Mm -hmm. And I saved the best for last because it's perhaps one of the most critical components of PvP. So in PvP combat, spacing typically refers to the management of the distance between you and your opponent during the duration of the fight. It includes positioning yourself in a way that allows you to control the engagement, take advantage of your character's strengths, and exploit your opponent's weaknesses. Proper spacing can be crucial for dodging attacks, landing hits, and overall improving your chances of success in the fight. Good spacing will either bait your opponent into attacking so that you can punish them, or allow you time to read their movements to pry out an opening in which to attack. With good spacing, you'll be able to attack and or trade while gaining the upper hand, because if you do it right, your hit will hit first. And if you've optimized your build in any way, you'll make them panic roll, which you can punish with a roll catch. But roll catching is a topic for another video. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we got for you today. So hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And I hope this helps you slay your invasions and have a just a great fucking time doing it. Leave us a comment below on another reason players suck at PvP that we might have missed that you may see in another educational video later. Alright guys, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Later. Mm -hmm.